Hi everybody, welcome to the Master Flow Plumbing YouTube channel. It's been a little while since we've done a video, we've been quite busy. Here we are and today we're going to be talking about how to flare copper, the uses of flared copper, and basically how to do it. Before we begin though, click the subscribe button, like the video, it helps us out greatly. Alright, so let's talk about copper and why you might want to flare it. Okay, the reason why you're going to flare copper typically is sometimes it's because you're going to do some type of a connection underground or you're going to be using this for gas which is going to be the most common thing i'd like to actually point out that using copper for a gas line is not allowed everywhere so you're going to want to check with your local county uh, inspectors and find out if it is allowed to do there it is commonly used by homeowners i see it all the time where it's not quite done correctly and i see leaks uh, most of the time plumbers don't mess with this stuff anymore it's usually mechanical contractors and heating and cooling companies that do gas lines however I actually had quite a bit of experience back in the day uh, when I was an apprentice and beyond that a little bit where plumbers in Michigan were still allowed to do gas lines. It fell underneath our plumbing license. It no longer does actually. So, But with that said, I'm going to show you a couple things on how to flare fitting. So let's just say we want to put these two pieces of 3 8 This is 3 8 OD soft copper. Let me um, make, a, make a point about that. In order to flare copper to use for anything, whether it be a water line or a gas line or whatever, it has to be a type K soft copper, what is called soft copper. And what I mean by soft is it will bend very easily by hand. Okay, I'm gonna just use that piece right there just to show you. And then we're gonna use this tool right here to actually flare the two ends that we wanna make a connection using this fitting, which is a flare coupling. Okay, which consists of two flare nuts and a flare actually coupling. So what we got to do is we got to make it so that this actually goes in there. And in the end, we want our flared end to look like this. Okay, so, or as close to that as possible. So we're using a ratcheting, rigid pipe flaring tool, which is, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only one on the market. Okay, so to get started on this, this one is actually labeled right here, the different size copper that we can actually do with this one. We can do three quarter, we can do half inch, you know, or five eighths, half inch, three eighths, and on down right there. So today we're gonna work with half inch ID, which will be five eighths OD, and we're gonna work with three eighths OD. So to get started on this, basically we're going to clamp this piece of copper right here into where the 3 8 is. And we want it just a tad over the top of this to where it's not quite flush. You see where I got that right there? So the next thing, this is a little tricky. We're going to clamp that together best we can with our hands. We've got to slide this guy into here. And if you notice, there's these little notches right here. So what I have to do is I have to actually lock this part of it onto it. And to do that, I'm going to actually do this. And it's a little tricky. It's a little cumbersome to actually sometimes hold it in place and whatnot, even somebody who's done it for a long time. So what I find the best thing to do is actually is to actually go ahead and get our flared end down into this, which again is a little bit tricky, but we want to find center basically. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and get this kind of started in there like that. I found center now. I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. And at that point, I'm going to go ahead and begin turning this. Okay, and then right now what it's doing, if you look down inside of there, it's got like a cone-shaped piece that this is threading down onto it and is actually flaring that piece of copper out. And it's going to create quite a nice little flare on the end of it. I'm going to take this back off now. I'm going to spin it back off. Give myself enough room to actually back it out of there. Whoop. We're going to slide that off of there. I'm going to pull this out. I would like to point out, and I'll show you on the other side, typically we're going to want to put that nut on first because they do not always be able to go on there like that. So what you want to make sure is that you don't have any sharp burrs on here. Um, this is actually quite smooth, but if you did have a little burrs on there, you'd want to very gently, maybe use a very fine file. Just try to get some of those burrs off there so that this piece right here is going to ultimately fit right onto that little cone right there. If you look at how this is shaped, this is what we're trying to accomplish with the, with the copper now, is we're trying to get that copper to match up with that beveled shape that's on there. In order to do that, we have to flare it. So you can actually see how well that actually does fit together right there. I haven't even put the nut on there yet, and you can actually see how good that actually fits. So, 
just like in my compression vid uh, fitting video that we did a little while back, I'm going to recommend that you use some kind of a pipe thread sealer or pipe dope, if you want to call it that, and put it on the threads. We're not really using this to try to make any kind of a seal. All I'm using it for is a lubricant, basically. I'm going to make sure that my nut, when I go to tighten it down on here, is actually going to tighten down all the way without binding on a thread or anything like that. So generally the rule of thumb with these compared to a compression is a little bit different. We're actually going to run that down as far as we can by hand. I can already feel it's tight on that flare. So I'd probably go ahead and give that like another quarter of a turn with some wrenches um, just to make sure that it is indeed tight and is not going to come loose or can't be taken loose by hand. So to finish the other side of this joint right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take, piece, take the other piece of copper that we're going to use right here. And of course, you know, you won't be doing this on a bench. You'll be doing this probably on the floor you know, in a basement or in a wall or something like that. Who knows, you know, where our projects take us at times. So again, I'm going to just actually kind of, whoop, we're going to go ahead and get this centered. I'm going to go ahead and lock it in. You want to make sure you have that nice and tight. Again, you don't have to have this nice rigid tool to do this with. They do make some inexpensive options. If I'm not mistaken, I think this tool right here is literally a couple hundred dollars. So, but I mean, it's the best one there is. They don't make a better one than this. Um, your, your local hardware stores and Home Depot and those places like that, they do carry cheaper versions. Just be more patient with those. Make sure you have this clamped down. What I've seen with those is that the big problem is that they don't clamp down on the tube good enough. So when you start tightening down the top part of it, it just pushes the pipe right out of the bottom of it. So that's really the biggest problem that you should watch for if you're going to use a cheaper tool. But again, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and tighten this down. See, this one ratchets like this too, which really makes it nice. I'm going to run it down until I kind of feel that it's like, okay, yeah, there's not a whole lot left there to actually tighten down. I probably could actually squeeze it more if I wanted to, but then you'll end up over flaring, which is not something you really want to do. So I'm going to back that out. I'm going to back this loose. I'm going to back that off there. I'm going to pull my, my piece out of there. I got my nut that goes on. I'm going to just check it. It looks like it fits very nicely. I don't have any sharp burrs. If I did, I would just simply very gently maybe use something to clean those off with. And you could actually, if you wanted to, you could actually take a, a, um, a deburring tool and go on the inside of this before you begin. But I've never had a lot of luck doing that. Um, I, I end up with more of a rough edge that way than I do doing it this way. So again, we're just going to put a little bit of this on here. If nothing else, it'll make it easy for us to take it apart 25 years from now when we need to. And we're going to go ahead and just run that down until it's nice and tight. And that's it. Um, we would give that, like I said, about a quarter, a quarter turn, you know, with some wrenches right there just to make sure that that's in there. And then you can use soap and water or some type of a uh, gas leak. Uh, you know, mixture that will actually tell you once you pressurize this and turn this on, you know, that'll tell you if you have any leaks. It's very, very important to check for leaks, especially if you are going to use this for any type of gas. Now, you won't see a lot of this in Michigan for natural gas. Uh, you know, some of the older homes, you'll find stuff like this that, you know, people have used to run to their gas dryer down in their basement. You don't see it really used for anything else in the house. You know, occasionally you'll see a stove hooked up this way. None of that's up to code. I'm not a heating and cooling contractor. I'm a plumber, but I do know that the inspectors don't typically like to see that. Now, where I do see a lot of it in Michigan, your state, again, may be different. But in Michigan, we'll see, you know, a lot of the uh, more rural areas actually have to use propane, you know, for heating uh, their water and heating their homes and cooking and all that stuff like that. And it turns out, actually, soft copper is actually ideal for propane not so much for natural gas you know as far as uh, michigan code goes so that's that's just the 3 8 od the procedure is exactly the same for a larger one this video is not intended i know i'm going to get some comments in the comment section about oh well you know if you're using this for hydraulic lines or brake lines on automotive or anything like that and, oh you should do this and you should do that you know what i'm not making a video for that i'm making it for plumbing and why you might use it for copper you will not use this for a brake line on a car and you probably will not use it for hydraulics as you know either uh, typically those are going to be more of a stainless steel for like hydraulics or a car uh, maybe even aluminum of some kind there's different types of material that you can flare but today's video is strictly to talk about 
its uses in, in gas lines and its uses in plumbing. Now, when it comes to like water lines, if you had to do a repair underground on a water main coming into your house, this is typically how you're probably going to do it if that is a copper water line coming in from like a, a city curb stop, you know, which is usually out near the street, you know, at your home if you have city water. If you're on a well, well, we don't have these things going on out in our yard, but if you're on city water, you probably have, you know, if it's in the last 50 years, you probably have a copper water main that comes off of the city water main and comes into your house. It's probably going to be three quarter or one inch, one of those two. Um, once in a while you'll get a hole in one of those and it needs to be repaired. Well, this is a acceptable way of actually doing that and is code uh, in most cases. Again, you'll have to check that with your local you know, authorities and make sure that you know what you're doing is legal to do. But that is flaring 101, folks. I, I hope that helps you. Again, I'd like to remind you to click the uh, subscribe button down there and like our video. It does help us out. You folks have a great day.